a lot of videos about programming languages completely miss the point. They'll say things like, this language is easy, or this one is fun, or this is trending on Twitter. That doesn't matter. What actually matters in 2026 is the following. What languages show up in real production systems, what companies are still hiring for, and which skills AI amplifies instead of replacing. So in this video, I'm going to rank the best programming languages to learn in 2026 based on actual usage data, developer adoption, and where the industry is clearly heading. We're going to cover five languages. Let's get into it. Let's start with TypeScript, the default language of modern apps. Now, according to GitHub's Octoverse data, TypeScript is the most used language on GitHub, surpassing both JavaScript and Python in active contributors. Now, on top of that, TypeScript saw a 65% year-over-year growth in contributors, which is massive for a language that's already very large in use. Now, why does this matter? Because TypeScript is no longer just a front-end language. It's now used for front-end applications, back-end APIs, internal tools, developer tooling, AI products, and interfaces. And if you look at modern startups, a lot of them are effectively TypeScript end-to-end. -end. You have TypeScript for the front-end, the back end and everything in between. And if you know TypeScript, you can make an entire app. Now still, people always ask, won't AI replace front end developers? Now AI can generate UI code, that's true, it can do that pretty well, but it still struggles with state management, data modeling, architecture decisions, understanding real product requirements. And where TypeScript shines is exactly in those areas. So if your goal is to build real products quickly and stay employable, then TypeScript is arguably the highest leverage language that you can learn right now. That said, there is still a lot of competition and it can be hard to stand out, especially as a junior TypeScript developer, which is why some of the other languages on this list may be a better choice for you. Let's move to language two and talk about Python. Now, according to the Stack Overflow Developer Survey, about 58% of developers use Python, making it one of the most widely used languages in the world. Now, what's more interesting is that Python had one of the largest year-over-year -year growth increases, even at this scale. And on the TIOBE index, Python sits at roughly 25 to 27% of total language popularity, which is higher than any other language. But here's the key point. Python is not powerful because it's fast, it's powerful because it controls everything. Python is the language that orchestrates AI, works with pipelines, glues systems together, automates business logic, powers internal tools, drives data workflows, it does everything. Even when the heavy computation is happening in C++, Rust, or CUDA, Python is usually sitting on top coordinating it. With all of the frameworks and high-level modules, Python is extremely useful and versatile. But here's the honest part. Python alone is no longer rare. AI has made Python easier than ever to write, and that increases the supply of Python developers. So the real value in 2026 is knowing Python plus something else. So Python plus AI, Python plus backend systems, Python plus infrastructure, DevOps, domain expertise, Python probably won't be your entire career, but it's absolutely crucial to at least know some of it and combine it with something else. Now, with that in mind, if you're learning Python, you need to be a little bit careful. That's because studies have shown that when you're just watching tutorials or reading blog posts, you're only absorbing about 20% of the material. But when you learn actively by actually writing code and building things, that retention jumps to as high as 75 to 90%. And that's a massive difference. Now, honestly, that's why I always recommend DataCamp when you first start with Python, because the platform is super interactive where you're writing real code, getting instant feedback and building projects from day one. Now, DataCamp is sponsoring this video and I'm excited to tell you about their two Python learning tracks because they're genuinely something I wish I had when I was getting started many years ago. Now, I've used DataCamp myself and been recommending it for years now, and if you're just getting started, I'd highly recommend the Python Programming Fundamentals track, which is designed to teach you the basics from variables, functions, all the way up to working with data. Now, if you finish that and you're looking to push things to the next level and get job ready, then they also have the Associate Python Developer track, which dives deeper into real-world skills like APIs, data structures, and debugging. Now, both tracks are hands-on, project-driven, and designed to actually help you practice, not just passively, but by interactively learning. And right now, DataCamp is offering 25% off both of these using my link in the description. So if you're serious about learning Python the right way, check it out and don't miss out. Okay, let's move on to language three, which is Go. Now, Go is one of the most misunderstood languages on this list. 
Globally, roughly 16 to 18% of developers use Go, which may not sound like a lot until you look at where it's actually used. Go absolutely dominates cloud infrastructure, DevOps tooling, high throughput backend services, internal company platforms, and a lot of critical systems are written in Go. For example, container platforms, observability tools, internal APIs that quietly keep companies alive. Now here's why Go is interesting from a career perspective. Go roles usually have fewer applicants, higher expectations, and significantly more trust placed in the engineer. Why is that? Because Go is rarely someone's first language. Most Go developers already understand backend systems, APIs, concurrency, networking basics, production constraints. So when a company hires a Go developer, they're not just hiring someone to write code. They're hiring someone to own services, debug production issues, design systems, and because of those responsibilities, that naturally pushes the compensation up. Now, globally, Go developers tend to sit above average compared to backend salaries, which makes it a great career to get into and a good language to learn. Now, in most markets, the Go salaries are comparable to senior backend roles and are often competitive with Java and C++ positions that are at a senior level. So with that in mind, who should consider learning Go? Well, Go is especially strong if you want to work in backend engineering, cloud infrastructure, DevOps adjacent roles, internal tooling, high scale startups, or mature tech companies. Now it's obviously less ideal if you only care about front end, you want scripting, you don't care about systems at all, or you're working for like really early stage startups that probably wouldn't adopt Go. But if you like understanding how things work under the hood, then Go is one of the best ROI languages you can learn and you can build a really solid career on it, especially because it's trending really well in 2026 and more and more companies are adopting Go. That said, it is still a little bit more niche. You're not going to see as many positions for it, but if you're a really strong Go developer, I think that's going to be a great position to be in in 2026 and beyond. Now let's move on to language four, which is Rust. Now Rust has now been one of the most admired programming languages in the Stack Overflow survey for multiple years in a row. Roughly 70% of developers say that they want to work with Rust, even if they're not currently using it. Now that gap between admiration and usage is important because yes, a lot of people want to use it, but they're not currently using it. Now that means that the Rust adoption is still early, but when it is adopted, it's highly intentional and useful. Now Rust shows up in systems programming, security sensitive software, blockchain, low level infrastructure, performance critical services, and companies that adopt Rust do it very intentionally. It's never by accident. And they adopt it because of things like memory bugs, security vulnerabilities, undefined behavior in production. And that's because Rust handles all of those things very well. Now from the AI angle, Rust is also one of the hardest languages for AI to fake competence in. Its strictness forces understanding ownership, understanding memory, understanding correctness, and it makes it so that if you're a strong Rust developer, you cannot as easily be replaced by an AI. Now, Rust is not for everyone, but if you want to work close to the metal and build things that last, it's a very strong long-term bet. It's still early today, but it's trending towards more usage and Rust developers just love using the language. So I would bet that in the future, we're going to see more and more demand. And that if you were to learn Rust now, you wouldn't regret it a few years from now. Now let's move on to the final language. And I'm actually grouping two together here because they're somewhat similar and that's Java and C sharp. And I really mean pick one of these based on the ecosystem you work with. Now, the reason why I'm putting these languages together is because oftentimes, especially beginners like to dismiss these. Now, Java is still used by roughly 30% of developers worldwide, where C sharp sits around 25 to 28%. That means these are not going away anytime soon. And that's because these languages dominate enterprise backend systems, financial platforms, large distributed services, and internal business tooling. And here's the thing people still forget. AI has not replaced enterprise software. Banks still run Java, large corporations still run .NET, governments still run massive legacy systems. And if you want access to stable roles, large organizations and complex real world systems, you need to know at least one of these enterprise languages. Again, C Sharp or Java. Especially at junior levels, less developers are learning these older languages. I don't want to say older, but essentially not as new modern fancy languages like TypeScript, meaning that if you learn them, you can stand out and be more competitive, especially at a junior level. So if we recap this video, TypeScript is the default language of modern applications. Python is the control plane for AI and automation. Go gives you infrastructure and backend leverage. 
Rust is a long-term bet for secure systems, and Java and C Sharp anchors you in enterprise reality. Now, the biggest mistake that I see people make when they're learning these languages is collecting them. Don't do that. Just pick one core language, one multiplier kind of niche, and go deep. In 2026, depth is going to beat breadth every single time. And like I talk about over and over on this channel, you need to be an expert in something, especially in the era of AI, where it can do all of those surface level tasks very easily. Now, let me know what language you're gonna be learning in 2026 in the comments down below. Subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next one.